Welcome to an Applied Energistics 2 tutorial. The topic today is subnetting. And I'm currently playing a mod pack in case you see mods you don't recognize. The Enigmatica 2 Expert mod pack for Minecraft 1.12. And the concepts today for AE2 subnetting are exactly the same for newer versions of AE2, like on Minecraft 1.60. So same concepts, just newer version. That's my main net in the background. And that's the subnet. So I'm going to show how I build this and be sure to skip to the relevant parts of the video in case you don't want to see something. But first, a couple examples in my survival world. I find it helpful to see working use cases of things when trying to learn a new concept. So for subnets, I felt like I should show a couple systems. So behind me is the system that I'm going to build later on in the video from scratch. So you know how, how it works, but here it is in the game. And I would call this my lazy subnet system. Basically, there's a timer down here with redstone, and every half an hour, it'll do a pulse for however many seconds, so this buffer runs out, and then it does a harvest of everything that is growing. And it just jams them into these stored cells. There's no partitioning, there's no nothing, it just fills them. And if once it's full, it's full. And it's of course, it's tied with this cable to my main network down below, but it will never overflow. Once these drives fill up, it's just done. And then I have my redstone logic disabling that so it stops running and it doesn't just drop items on the ground. Another subnetting system that I use is partitioning. So each one of these storage cells has a name and it's partitioned with one type of device. So if we look at the subnet, that's what's in there. So my mob farm dumps all loot into this chest and then they get pulled out and pulled into the subnet if it has a drive set up for it. And you'll see this is full of junk because this is everything that I have not configured. And occasionally I come by here and I say, you know what, I don't want any of this and I just trash it all. Or say, hey, I actually want this to be um, subnetted and put into my drive. So I'll take it, I'll partition it and I'll name it and I'll stick it in here. And this is gonna look maybe a little overwhelming, but ignore it. This is my subnet on the other side of this, and this is actually my main net. See how it's split right here? So this is a subnet where this is a main net. And what happens here is these systems say, hey, when I'm low on skulls, turn on this transmitter and it turns on my mob farm. These are all my different mobs that I need. So another really cool subnetting example is my armory. In this pack, mobs drop gear. And I have an integrated dynamics um, stripper machine that pulls the armor off of the mobs in mint condition. Well, most of them off in mint condition. I think a few of them don't have energy or charge or something, but for the most part, they're mint condition. And I don't want this mob farm that's constantly sending items periodically to jam up my entire storage system. So they're confined to only these two drives. And if I decide, hey, I need more space, which I doubt I ever will, I could slam them more in here. But that's another great use case for a subnet. Nobody goes back there. Time for a build example. So I got this harvester here that when I turn the redstone on is going to do the whole area at once. In my survival world, I have this on a timer so it runs for 20 seconds. So this buffer goes down and then it's off for like a half hour because I don't need a lot of crops. I just need a certain steady amount coming in. And I got the fertile dirt and the greenhouse glass to make sure these crops kind of grow quickly and at the same rate. So every time this thing fires, we're kind of getting an equal amount of items put into our localized storage area that I'm going to show building. And it's very important that, for me anyways, I don't want all this junk that's getting harvested to fill up my main network. So that's why I'm making a subnet. And if you don't know what this is, or it looks a little overwhelming, I recommend checking out a previous video of mine where I actually build this and talk about the various things you see in this tutorial world, this creative world of mine, or just in general, look for Applied Energistics 2 tutorials on subnets and P2P tunnels. But uh, but yeah, it's not an efficient design. I just tried to build it in a way that was really easy to digest. So P2P tunnels are awesome. Definitely recommend learning how they work. So for now, before I actually tie this storage system into the main net over here, I want to build an ad hoc network for demonstration purposes. 
I throw a drive in and I throw down an import bus with acceleration cards, we should see these items getting sucked out. And now they're in here. And for ad hoc networks or sub networks, I like to throw down a different type of cable behind my terminal so I can easily see, hey, this is an ad hoc or a sub network. It's not really my main net, which I leave as the basic Fluix purple color. Just by itself in an export world, this is an amazing way to have a storage system. It's really nice and compact. You can, uh, you can have eight devices on here, one, two, three. So three of eight right now on an ad hoc network. You can't make it any bigger unless you use an ME controller. The ME controllers give you 32 faces. You can build them in complex ways. They give you lots and lots of channels. That's what these kind of these P2P tunnels do. They allow me to take 32 channels from this block face and compress them down to one and send them throughout my base. So you can see I'm extracting 32 channels at kind of each of these areas where you see that happening right there. So let's build it here easier to see than to talk about. For starters off this dense cable, I have to have an eight channel cable, and then I can slap down a P2P tunnel. And to program these, you shift right click and it gets a frequency and you can see it's online, but it's unlinked. So online means it has power. It's not linked, so there's no data. And I happen to know, this is one of the ones I was testing previously, it's unlinked. I'm gonna reprogram it by right clicking on it. And now we can see it says missing channel. If you give it a minute to load, device online and its link. So again, all of these channels are being compressed into these P2P tunnels and sent for me to use. And it is overkill, right? Because if we look at this example, I'm only using three out of 32 channels. If you look at the tooltip there, I could just pull this cable around and use it here. But what's the fun in that? I like to use the smart cables sparingly because I believe they cause lag if you have many of them in your system, like spanning your whole base. So I like to use these for long runs and these for indicators just to help count. So the storage bus allows you to interact with external inventories. Very popular to use with the drawer controller, as you can see there. That storage bus allows me to see every single item inside all these drawers. So the same thing here. This storage bus is going to treat this little network as another inventory. It's not part of the main net. And the way that you interface with another little subnet ad hoc thing like that is with the interface. So we slap that down. So storage bus. Is accessing this. And if we slap this down and this down, we should see that everything's online, everything's happy because I'll we'll talk about this soon. I'll get rid of it actually. This has got power and this has got power. They're actually split here, they're isolated. Only data is passing through here. That's maybe a good time for me to mention the whole concept, the core concept on applied energistics, is it's a mod that works on the idea of data and energy. So most of these cables have data and energy flowing through them, but when you get here, only data can pass through this. If I was to break this, you would see shortly this would run out of power. So technically data is still running through here, but these devices don't have power. A really popular way to power them is to use a quartz fiber, which only allows energy power through it, no data. So these two networks are still isolated because of this, which is exactly the same as if I had left a energy acceptor down there. But those things are kind of expensive. And it's just another power source to have. So yeah, if we have 49 blueberries there, we got 49 blueberries in there. Now there's a problem with this design right now, and there's a couple ways to fix it. So if you're a little familiar with Applied Energy 6.2, you might even kind of questioning yourself right now, because what I've done here is not going to work perfect. There's a potential right now when I'm interacting with this interface, this, this uh, inventory, I could put items into here, because it is an external inventory. 
but I want to set it up that it only has these crops. I don't want other stuff. I don't want like sand and ores getting pushed into here because it's basically a big chest. So what you can do for lazy subnetting, as I call it, is you can put it on extract only. So that way you can only pull items out of here. You can't put items in. And for the most part, when you're auto crafting, let's say you were using your auto crafting system over there to to make um, food or something with all these crops, that's fine because that's going to pull up the exact amount that it needs and then make stuff. If you're doing manual crafting, then possibly you're going to pull out too many items. Then when you throw them back in, instead of going in here, these these crops they're going to go into another inventory. And for me, that's not a big deal. I expect to be auto crafting most of the stuff, so it'll be it'll be precise. But what you could do, I never do this. But you can teach it to hey, only allow in what is already in there. I don't really care for that. I usually do extract only, except on my mob farms. My mob farms, let's say wither skulls, wither skeleton skulls. I want to make sure I have room for those because you're going to get a lot more bones and a lot more rotten flesh from a mob farm than you are skulls. So it's really important actually to take a storage cell, to give it a to stick it in the cell workbench and to say, hey, I want whatever item. I want to make sure this thing can only take that item. So you're partitioning it to only accept this item. You could put more items in, but again, you run the risk of it getting filled with more of one type of item and then less of another. I like to make one per. And because there's no way to know what you've formatted it as, you should give it a name. I usually spell it properly, but I'm lazy right now. So if I stick this in here, this partition drive is only going to take that type of item. And so the best way that I do it for mob farms, for me personally, is to name and partition every single one of these. So there's no cell that takes everything. I want them to only take certain things and it, it makes sure that I'll always have room for skulls or some of the more rare drops. But that's the second way to make a subnet, is to partition everything. For this example, I think going lazy is fine, because all these crops grow at a consistent rate, so every time this thing pulses and harvests for uh, 20 seconds or whatever it is, I'm gonna get basically the same quantity crop. 